and then we're hoping we still have at least uh, some time uh, to answer uh, any questions that uh, may come from the audience. So uh, I'd like to uh, start that the Global Rice Science Partnership is a CGR research program, or CRP, uh, or some of you may have heard the name mega program used before. So we call this now uh, CRP <coughs> under the thematic area three on sustainable crop productivity increase for global food security of the new strategy and results framework of the CJR. Uh, it is uh, an evolving alliance led by ERI as the lead institution, but uh, with Africa Rice and uh, CIRT as uh, other CGR institutions. Uh, CIRT, IRD from France and Jekers from Japan uh, as other strategic partners uh, who have uh, an international uh, rice research mandate as well, or activities uh, on a global scale. Uh, and it involves uh, present, and as you will see later, already hundreds uh, of uh, different research and development partners uh, worldwide. I'd like to start, uh, not to scare you, but to briefly explain what a uh, consortium research or CTR research program is. Uh, for those of you who have not been so much involved in the CTR change uh, process that has happened in the last uh, one and a half or two years, not quite two years, uh, this is a, a summary of how the new structure of the CGR will look like. So we have on one side the consortium of the CGR centers as a new legal entity which is in the process of obtaining the status of an international organization and uh, uh, the consortium board chair uh, is with us today. So it has its own uh, Consortium Board, CEO, and an office which will be in Montpellier in France. Uh, on the right side you see, uh, on the left, in your case, on the right, uh, the CGR fund representing the donors uh, with their own fund council and the fund office in Washington. Research in the CGR will be uh, driven by the strategy and results framework. That document is undergoing another round of revision and so hopefully be to be completed by January. Uh, and the implementing components of the SRF will be these CRPs, these CGR research programs. Uh, they, there are at the moment uh, 15 of these uh, CRPs under development and the one on rice systems or GISP uh, together with the one on climate change uh, were the first two that have been approved uh, to go forward just last week at the Fund Council meeting in Washington. So in many ways uh, these two programs uh, set the stage, they provide a model, uh, they are very different in nature uh, one much more focused on a major commodity and its production systems, the other one much more focused on a major global theme yeah. and going across many different uh, farming systems and environments. Yeah. So CGR centers uh, will participate in these different uh, programs. Uh, partners uh, will have hopefully uh, an increasing level of involvement in the design and implementation of these activities. But with that also come increasing responsibilities of the partners. So they also need to contribute indirectly or directly, co-invest, align their activities and resources with these new global programs. The reason why GRISP uh, was chosen as one of the uh, first ones, or actually the very first one to be uh, developed and go forward, is probably because of the fundamentally different or fundamentally very important role of uh, rice as the most important uh, food crop for human consumption. Many countries, particularly in Asia, but also uh, some in Africa and Latin America, uh, rice uh, in terms of caloric uh, supply is by far uh, the most important food crop. It is also the uh, primary source of nutrition for 
the largest number of poor people in the world, about 560 million people in the world depend on rice as their primary food staple. And as you can see from this graph, uh, this is followed by wheat and then many other uh, crops uh, or commodities uh, with a smaller share. So it is a very important crop. And at the third reason, it is also the crop that is grown through the widest range of environments and production systems. Coming here as an example for, of the rice ecologies in uh, Latin America, anywhere from the temperate uh, regions in southern Brazil and Argentina, all the way to the tropical regions and uplands, you can grow rice, and it is the same like this in Africa and in Asia. So, very unique crop, very unique production systems, very important crop in the global nutrition, food security, health, and even economy picture. So, we know that uh, rice demand will continue to increase. Those of you who have uh, attended the Rice Policy and Investment Forum have seen much more detailed uh, presentations. We don't know exactly what will happen after about 10 years, but we know that at least in the next 10 years we need to produce each year at least about 8 million tons rice more, rough rice. We know that the harvest area, uh, the land area that is net effect uh, available for rice will not substantially grow beyond the 155 to 160 million hectares that we have. And that means the uh, yield growth uh, needs to be in the range of 1.2 to 1.5 percent per year over the next 10 years. And more so in Africa where demand is rising faster and probably even more so in parts of Latin America where we still import rice too. After that, yield growth rates can probably come down a little bit. But what fundamentally has to change is the way rice is grown. We have a high environmental footprint that ranges from water to general carbon footprint. So we need to adapt these systems to climate change, but also produce rice in the future with less tillage, less water, less labor, less pesticides, and generally more efficient use of inputs such as nutrients and we need to have these systems a lot more resilient to also cope with the changes in the environment. And that will also require smarter people who implement those changes. Not just scientists, but also farmers, extension workers. These are all activities that we try to address in the Global Rice Science Partnership. Our entry point is that if we want to change the way rice is grown, and at the same time meet the rising demand, uh, we must raise system productivity, the price based cropping or farming systems, and at the same time achieve that also with an increase in the efficiency of inputs and an improvement in the resilience. If that is possible, then we enable increased food security, nutrition health, encourage farmers through increased income to diversify their systems and therefore also raise incomes even more which then enables them also to invest more into sustainable management practices and therefore also have a reduction of the environment footprint. So this is the virtual circle that we want to achieve and it's at the core of GRIS as a production system oriented research program. Mm -hmm. We have chosen in this GRIS uh, a more business-like approach in terms of how we structure and want to implement the Global Rice Research Agenda. Uh, we have uh, six research for development themes that address uh, three strategic objectives that are part of the strategy and results framework of the uh, new CJR. And then these are operationalized, these six themes, in the form of 26 uh, global and regional uh, research and development product lines which are families of uh, actual products or deliverables uh, and each of those has a set of activities uh, with clear milestones and we have at the moment uh, in this first five year plan uh, a total of 94 products uh, that then also have a specific uh, update pathways towards impact. 
Our product in our sense is not just a material good like a new variety or uh, something else. It is also a scientific discovery or a piece of information that can be beneficial and have impact in many ways. In addition to the product oriented R&D structure, we have, or we want to, uh, accelerate the investments in new discoveries. New Frontiers research uh, will have to be supported by a less restrictive way of doing research. We want to go back to more exploratory work that really tackles some of the big challenges where big breakthroughs uh, could be made, but will also take a lot more time to have uh, been accomplished. So we have uh, a five-year strategic assessment as uh, the underlying mechanism to identify and gradually and continuously update and refine our priorities. We presented some preliminary uh, work on this uh, this morning. We will have a five-year uh, work and business plan. The initial funding level that we are targeting is about $100 million per year through different sources of the CGR but also bilateral grants and at least a 10% annual growth rate. But we also will have, and I can expect more, uh, co-investments uh, by many partners participating in this program, either of direct or indirect co-investments that can contribute to this more aligned and streamlined and focused global rights research agenda. The six themes in GRISP are, uh, first one is all about uh, Conserving, characterizing, and better utilizing the world's rice genetic resources uh, for enhancing productivity, efficiency of systems, quality, and lots of health. Theme two is then utilizing the discoveries uh, and the uh, genetic resources from theme one to accelerate the development and adoption of new improved rice varieties. Uh, theme three uh, is there to look at the future, future rice-based uh, production systems and how we can intensify them in an ecologically and sustainable manner in different parts of the world, including uh, adaptation to climate change and also mitigation to, of greenhouse gases. Thing four is uh, about extracting more value. In many ways, uh, by reducing post-harvest losses, but also improving the quality, uh, exploring new ways of utilizing byproducts from rice, uh, and having generally higher, or more sophisticated value chains to the benefit of farmers. Theme five uh, is about technology evaluation, targeting, and policy options that includes activities uh, such as uh, household level characterization and targeting. <laughs> but also uh, a global rice information gateway and strategic assessment and impact assessment studies. And theme six is going to be our contribution to large scale investments in development of the rice sector. So contributions and linkages of research uh, with development partners, both in the public, in the civil society and in the private sector. These themes uh, are interconnected. So products, as you see here in this example, uh, for uh, a product that would belong to the category of stressed along rice varieties in theme two, uh, we need to have a clear understanding of where we are targeting such a product, where is it needed by farmers, and what kind of environment, and what kind of cropping systems, and what are the requirements from a processing or value chain point of view. Only then can we define the traits needed and the genetic resources needed uh, to develop this variety and it then requires also to utilize the strengths of different partners in implementing different activities to develop this product and also then disseminate it through the different mechanisms uh, under theme 6. So this is roughly how we envision this for all of these uh, different products uh, in this uh, program. Interactions and interdisciplinary work will be extremely important to accomplish the goals that we have. There are different roles uh, of partners uh, in this Global Rice Science Partnership. We have uh, direct research partners 
who have major accountabilities in terms of uh, <laughs> conducting research that leads to the development of these new products and seems one and five.